Hi, Brian. Wanted to get in two questions for the price of one, again, if I could. Uh, with Byron Jones, is the Achilles at all a concern in terms of whether he's actually going to be able to play through this? And wanted to ask you why you and Chris decided to take a chance on Callaway. I know that the league-owned website says he's got to sit out uh, seven more weeks. Oh, well, you know, I'll start on Callaway and uh, Chris and the uh, personnel staff, Chris, Marvin, Brandon, um, you know, and our, our scouting department obviously does a lot of, we did a lot of uh, work on um, Antonio was, along with some, a lot of other players. Uh, we felt like it was um, an opportunity to add a, a um, you know, a player, a talented player. Um, and, you know, that's what we did. Uh, so, um you know, we'll work with them over the next few weeks um, in the capacity that we can. Obviously, not you know so much because of the suspension, but when we can, we will work with them, um, and uh, we'll see where it goes. Uh, the first part of your question with Byron, um, Byron's working uh, you know extremely hard to um, you know rehab, and we'll see where he is for for, for game time. But um, you know, he's something he's been dealing with, and uh, but he's working to get back out there as quickly as he can, and. Uh, and you know it's a day-to-day, -day, it's kind of a day-to-day -day thing, so we'll see. Uh, we heard yesterday from uh, Byron and Kyle that the players have something in mind uh, just by a demonstration before the game. Uh, I would assume they've they've put you in on that. Is it, whatever they're planning, are you okay with? And is there any kind of demonstration you would not be alright with? I'm sorry, Adam. I'm 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 a little bit uh. With you driving and talking to me, I'm kind of a little bit afraid for your safety. So that's kind of where my mind is. Uh, I'm not sure what the uh, – I talk to our players about the laws. And, uh, but, all right, so specific to uh, your question, uh, yeah, so we've had some conversations as a team. Uh, look, I'm going to keep those internal. Um, look, we're, we're going to support, you know, any player and, and every player. Um, with however they want to uh, protest or uh, whatever they want to do from that standpoint. Uh, but yeah, those, those, uh, those conversations are ongoing. And um, again, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the topics we're ta they're talking about are very serious. Um, and we respect uh, each, each guy's opinion and uh, right to protest, not protest. Um, but uh, I would also say that, you know, a lot of the guys, you know, they just want to focus on the game and that's, that's 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 been more of the uh, those conversations. Has been how do we uh, do whatever we're going to do, but but also just you know have our, our our total focus on the New England Patriots. Hey, good morning, Flo. Um, when you got a game, I guess like tonight, where you don't play either opponent, can you sit back and relax? You know, eat some food, have a drink, and enjoy the game. Or are you always on football mode trying to scout? Um. I mean, when I watch the game, it's, you know, you can try to relax, but, you know, what would you do on third down? What would you do in this situation? It's two minutes. You just, your mind kind of goes. Um, I think that's how every coach is, uh, you know, Pop Warner, high school, uh, college, National Football League. Once you get into, um, you know, this profession and those types of situations, uh, your mind kind of, it, it goes there regardless. So you can try, but that is relaxing in a lot of ways for, for coaches. So, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's nice to sit and watch a game. Um, but yeah, your, your mind starts to wander a little bit, you know, and get, and start to work out. How would you handle this situation or that situation? So, um, but it's, it's, it's going to be fun to have, uh, a game to watch, you know, it's been such a long time, whether it's pre season I mean we I think like like a lot of people um you know I love the sport so um it, it, I'll be watching and um uh, I'll be working as well so it, it, it's, it's a normal Thursday night it's back into kind of my normal routine in season. Flo good morning um at some point over the course of this season you'll be faced with the decision maybe of you know maybe having to pull fits and, and put Tua in quarterback um when when you do have to make that decision or come across that bridge whether it could be halftime of Sunday's game or later on in the course of the season what makes you feel that tool would be ready and prepared for that moment whenever it does come 
Um, I mean, that is a lot. It's just, it's like a very, a lot of high, a very hypothetical question there. Uh, at some point, it'll happen. I, mean, I think it's. I think it's. 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 I mean, it's. It's. It could happen to at any position. I mean, it's football. You know, guys get injured. Things happen. Uh, so the, the entire team or the guys who are on the active roster have to be ready to go. Um, and two is part of that. So, um, you know, specific to, you know, pulling someone. Uh, I mean, it's no different than if a guy goes down. You know, next guy's got to be ready. So, um, <laughs> I think it's, you know, uh, I, I understand the question to a degree, but, you know, I, I want all, everyone on our team to be ready to go. I mean, if you're on the active roster, um, you need to practice and prepare as if you're going to go in the game. And I'll just, just leave it at that. I don't know how I could follow that one up, but, uh, um, I want to ask you about, is there, do you see the coincidence in the fact that you've got three former Patriots as captains, even though? Anybody else lose them? Those guys having been with you and familiar with your scheme and familiar with the organization you're coming from, does that have any kind of impact on, on where they've gone status-wise on your squad? Uh, you kind of froze right in the middle of there, Omar. So I, I believe the question is about the three yeah, uh, former Karras, Patriots. Roberts yeah. and, and Kyle. Well, I mean, I think they're all, uh, you know, good players. Uh, they're smart. They're tough. Um, they care about uh, the game. Uh, they're team first. I think, you know, they, they've tried to build relationships, um, you know, throughout, you know, um, in the locker room and, you know, on defense, on offense, on special teams. Um, there are guys who, who care about those relationships, but um, they also, there's, there's also a number of other guys who, who, who um, are very similar. Um, guys who aren't former Patriots, like Bobby, like uh, Fitz, like Gotchow. Um, so um, it's always good to have uh, those types of players on your team. And, you know, I'm happy to, to have, uh, you know, the three former Patriots, but also the other guys we have as captains as well. Coach, a lot has been said about the uncertainty of the game and how the teams haven't seen each other in preseason and it's new to everybody. Is there any part of that uncertainty that you like? And what is that? I think it's, uh, you know, there's uncertainty for everyone. Um, well, the thing I like about it is, you know, you just go back to, um, you know, your rules, your reads, um, your fundamentals, your technique, and, you know, you, you kind of uh, see how, how far you come along from, from that standpoint. And, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, when it comes in football, when you're, uh, you know, there's a lot of different schemes, concepts, you know, defensive structures, um, and eventually you'll, you'll see something that you haven't seen before. Um, and you have to rely on your rules and your keys. And, and if you do that, um, you should be okay. So that part of it, I like, and um, there, that, that unknown is something that, you know, a lot of players, uh, they need to feel that. Uh, I think coaches need to feel that also and how we respond to that, um, you know, will, 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 I think, you know, help us moving forward. Hey, Flo, I know we've probably spent a lot of time asking about Tua, um, but I wanted to see, I guess, you know, are you okay with the scenario where he doesn't play at all this season? I mean, you know how I feel about questions about the entire season. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we're just going to take it one day at a time. Um, again, everybody's got to be ready to play. Um, it's football. You know, there's, you know, there's things, I mean, you never, you hope you knock on wood that there are no injuries, but you know, the, the reality is, is that um, you know, there are um, at several, you know, at positions, you know, O-line, D-line, quarterback, you know, DB, I mean, we're dealing with some now, so everyone's got to be ready to go. Um, and, 
Um, you know, when your number's called, you got to be ready to go in and, and, and try to be productive. So, um, and if your number's not called, then you just have to stay ready. And, uh, you know, that's kind of how the approach I, I'd like all our players to take um, and coaches, you know, couple that with the pandemic. I think everyone's got to be ready to go. So uh, um, if there's a year where uh, you see more players playing, I think this is it. So um, I'm not really thinking about guys not playing. Um, I'm trying to get guys ready to play. So I think that's what every coach should be doing. Hey, good morning, Coach. Um, earlier this week, Jesse Davis told us that he thinks whoever makes in-game adjustments the best will be the one that comes away with a victory. I'm just curious, are those mostly coaching observations, player observations, and, and how long does it take to make those adjustments? If you could just talk about the communication and the process of in-game adjustments. Um, I mean, it's a little bit of both, player and coach. I think that, you know, the players are out there on the field. You know, they, they hear things, they see things. Uh, and then if you can get the players and the coaches on the same page, um, then you can make some adjustments. Now, you know, there have been times where everybody's getting doubled. You know, there's only so many people on the field. So, you know, this guy, I got doubled and I got doubled and I got doubled. You know, they, they don't, they don't, they just don't have that many guys. So, I mean, it, there's got to be some honesty and transparency there on both ends. Uh, you know, and then you look at the tablet you know, and we have film. So we just try to tell them, let's be honest. And, you know, if you screwed up a play, then, you know, tell us about it, what happened and, you know, we'll get it fixed. But, you know, I got cut, I got doubled, eight guys got doubled. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, just, it's not, you know, that's, I've been in games where that's happened too. And that's, it's, it's it's not funny in the moment. It's funny the day after, after you watch the tape and you see the one guy who got doubled and other guys who just, you know, couldn't beat a block. So, but yes, to answer your question, Travis, you know, the, the in-game adjustments, they're, uh, you can make them, but it's got to be, you know, the communication on both sides has to be, uh, uh, it, it has to be transparent, has to be honest. That, that'd, be, that'd be my uh, my first thought. But, you know, thank you. I'll, I'll remind our guys on that, too.